For weeks, we have shown you the firsthand account of two professional climbers working to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Corey Richards and Adrian Ballinger shared their social their adventure rather on social media, and weren't we glad about that? Capturing their attempt in real time through Snapchat. So last week, Corey Richards made it to the top of the world without extra oxygen. Adrian Ballinger was forced to turn back before the summit after facing hypothermia. First on CBS this morning, Corey and Adrian are here at the table. Yay. But before we talk to them, <laughs> let's take a look at, at, at their daring journey. Intense winds up here now. These mountains, they, they break us. They bring us to the edge. Everest, woo! Oh, no. And finding where that edge is and then figuring out if we can still achieve beyond that, that's, that's what I love about this. It's another Himalayan sunrise. We went up to 8,300 meters, 27,000 feet, and Corey was setting a really good pace. And, you know, I could tell I, I couldn't quite keep up. And I knew I was already getting to that point where I wouldn't be able to get myself down alone. Unfortunately, AB had to turn around a little bit earlier. So it's up to me to hold it down. That's the summit. So I decided to keep climbing, and um, I got to the top in about eight hours. I feel so incredibly proud and, and such a part of Corey's success. I mean, if Adrian had chosen to continue, we both would have had to turn around when he got to a point Absolutely. where it was too dangerous, you know? My success has always been built on, on partnership, and, and this trip is, I think, uh, the, the prime example of that in every way. Corey Richards and Adrian Ballinger. Good morning. First of all, we followed you up. Yes. We feel like we know you. Yes. And so it, glad it's, yes. it's a testimony to friendship, too, yeah. listening to you guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks well, so much yes. for having us here. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty special to be here together. Uh, I'm happy you could make it this time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the summit. Yeah. Is, the mountain will be there. Yeah. The mountain I'll crawl will be on there. top of the table. Yeah. 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 How are you feeling? I feel a little wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel some, you know, I don't know, I can't quite tell if it's just this low-level exhaustion from climbing. I've gotten a little sick. I mean, I think it's pretty normal you come down and your body sort of just mm -hmm. releases. And I think we've both been through that a little bit, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, as well, as compared to actually standing on some other summits that I have, I feel more tired and broken down this time. I think the cold and the fight my body went through, I'm just, I'm, I'm destroyed. I feel really destroyed. You know, there's a, there's a saying that says, uh, God, you make plans and God laughs. Did, <laughs> did something happen that was unexpected that you didn't anticipate up there that you had a uh-oh moment? I mean, I think there's plenty of uh-oh moments on Everest, on every expedition, and I think you go out knowing yeah. that that's going to happen. And, and that can be uh, illness, that can be that, that windstorm that we encountered yeah, we that you guys that. covered. And that was, um, you know, that's, those are things that I think in climbing, in, in alpinism, you, s you really sort of plan for in advance and just know that if it happens, you got to deal with it. Why did you have to do this? Yes. Knowing that you could die. That's what, that's what I'm fascinated <laughs> By knowing that you could die. You know, I think both Corey and I have spent our lives sort of building experience within alpinism, within climbing, and Everest is the peak of that. It's the tallest mountain in the world, and to attempt it without supplemental oxygen, I've dreamt about it since I was 14 years old. <laughs> they told me this right before I came in here. Think about this. Only 7,000 people have gone to the top of Everest. Only 290 without oxygen. 190. 190. Yeah. yeah. And why did you want to do that when you said you've dreamt about it as a child? What did you dream? You know, I was lucky enough to read a book about climbing when I was young and started climbing. I lived in New England in Massachusetts. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I started on small rocks and then little bigger mountains. And then I went to South America when I was 17. And the process just kept going and going and going. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, for me, Everest is always, I just hate the ocean. So I just wanted to get as far, no, I'm just joking. I just wanted to get as far away from it as I could. Uh, no, I, yeah, I mean, my dad was a climber and, and he, uh, he read to my brother and I as kids, uh, you know, out of his mountain library and um, climbing was just ingrained in us. But you say you're not adrenaline junkies. Not yeah. Both of you said that to me. I truly believe, like, on a mountain this big and experience this long, it's two months up there of climbing. And if you get to the point where you feel adrenaline, mm -hmm. that shot of adrenaline, that's because something went really wrong oh, and you're yeah. in a rescue situation. My goal is to use, like, our, you know, decision-making to avoid those situations. That's a brilliant point yeah. about this is such a slow and steady, meticulous practice. 
Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's very much a, a marathon sport versus yeah. a sprinting sport. And I think that's that's even something on Summit Day that people don't really understand is that, you know, we were awake for 40 hours by the time we actually <clears throat> went to, to bed that night. Because you wake up, you climb to your high camp, you don't sleep, you plan on not sleeping, you stay up through the whole night, you leave at 10 p.m., you climb to the summit, you come back. To, so by the time we got back down to ABC, I'd been awake for 40 hours. Whoa. When you say that, I'm reminded of people who want to torture other people and are experts in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say that sleep deprivation is yes. one of the most effective weapons. Well, yeah. and I think mountaineering is pretty masochistic, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So. So I actually think it's one of my great only skills, greatest skills, is I can sleep anywhere, anytime. <laughs> so when will you go back? <laughs> when will we go back? I, I mean, I think we're going back to Tibet this fall together. Yeah, we're together? starting to dream up yeah. the next trip already. You know, wow. it was very touching on the tape. We all had an awe moment in the studio when you said a, a shout out to AB because he turned around when he knew that he wasn't going to make it. Because had he continued, then probably it would have delayed both of you. Were you thinking about him when you decided to turn? I realize you must have been in great pain. Yeah. Tell, t take us through that decision <laughs> there was process. Some pain. Take us to that, through that decision process about sure. how you decide, I can't do it. You know, that, that the summer day for me was really, really difficult. The night before, I never completely rewarmed. So we were sleeping, quote unquote, at 27,000 feet. Neither of us slept at all. And so even when we started climbing, I was already shivering and cold. Mm -hmm. And so that just sort of affected my whole day. I was a little bit behind Corey throughout. And I could just feel that cold getting deeper and deeper. And I started doing things like slurring my words. Uh -huh and having trouble with basic climbing techniques. And you were so close, Adrian. Did it so bother the, that you were so close? Of course it did. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's yeah. that sort of like heartbreak decision when I finally decided to turn around. I'm not sure I thought consciously like, <laughs> oh, my turning around is going to say help Corey to go to the summit. Yeah. But I knew if I didn't turn around, then I was going to be a rescue. Yeah. yeah. Weather yeah. is the great unpredictable element. Absolutely. Is there anything you could have done that might have done differently to prepare for this? Mm. I, I don't think. I mean, yeah. we, <laughs> we were like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, me, especially since I failed, you know, I'm going through all these things. Like, yeah. what could I have done just a little bit differently? And, you know, the day wasn't perfect for me. I knew the cold would be my greatest challenge. I'm a skinny guy. And um, so, you know, a day with less wind would have been great. But more, you know, maybe keeping a few more pounds on. I should have eaten more burgers and milkshakes before <laughs> I went to mm -hmm. Everest. Mm -hmm. can, can we talk <laughs> about the hair? I don't think the look, yeah. the, the look. You know, a lot of people were fascinated. After a while, people wanted to see what your hair was going to be like. Did you already have this look before you got on the mountain? I mean, I always look great. So. <laughs> yes. uh, well, that goes other than that, cool. and I'm super modest. Yes. Uh, yes. But I no, we I, I, we sort of just devolved into the mountain look uh, over time. And I mean, I always kind of have crazy hair, but but the hair by Everest thing was such a, a fabulous, funny hashtag that somebody came up with one of the followers on Snapchat. Yeah. And we were just like, well. And we we hadn't even really thought about it. We, yeah. There were no mirrors in camp. Yeah, we yeah, weren't looking course. at ourselves. And then someone said it, and we're like, oh, wow, yeah, that's kind of wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said one of the rules is to come back friends. You always, both of you always seem to be in great spirits. Did you ever have a, God, this dude is getting on my nerves? Did you ever have a moment like that? I mean, I've never had that with, with Adrian. We, we have moments of stress, but I think this whole thing, the, the whole story that we're actually telling is not about climbing Everest. I mean, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, but it really is about partnership. It's about mm -hmm. friendship. It's about the relationships that you form. Climbing is is sort of iconic in that way. And and these trips, they don't happen. You know, it's not just like Adrian and I decide, hey, let's go to Everest. I mean, they are huge, huge amounts of partnership yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, Eddie Bauer, Soylent, Strava, they put us there, right? So this was four years of planning. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We hung out in 2012 on Everest together when neither of us summited okay. that year. And we started brainstorming this idea. Idea, and it took four years. All right. <laughs> we are so glad you're back safely. Yeah. Well, thanks really. for having Congratulations us. Congratulations yeah. to both of you. Such a huge achievement, really. And thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you yeah. so much. It's been fun to be a part of you guys. So <laughs> thank appreciate you. it. And actually, we yeah. have something for you. Uh oh, Charlie. This is oh. Hair by Everest wig. I think you're going to look great. Oh, oh, the yeah. Team. yeah, you definitely just, there you go. <laughs> you look like Adrian. <laughs> Every morning. Oh, we got to get a picture. Right. That's yeah. so nice. Sorry.
<laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, Char <laughs> Charlie, don't, don't take it off. I want to get a picture. The conversation's going to continue because you guys will stay with a Facebook chat. I want to Absolutely. talk to you after the show. You'll stay. We'll be back with a Facebook live video chat at 9 a.m. Eastern. Go to Facebook.com slash CBS This Morning to watch. I'm going to put Charlie on Instagram right now. All right. We'll be right back.